So the way this works is that it's loose, like it's loose hanging. You can see it moves around here when it's, when it's open. Thursday afternoon, still working on the Cyclone Vac, and I'm still not 100% finished yet, but I'm pretty close. I um, spent much of today working on it, and the biggest thing was the method for lifting the bucket up and making a seal inside here. I came up with an idea last night, or yesterday evening more accurately, that I thought would be perfect, except, and, and I immediately settled on it. I stopped thinking after that. And so when I came out this morning to implement it, I realized the flaw in the thinking. All right, so sometimes you think about something, <clears throat> I'm to clear my throat here. Sometimes you think about something and you don't see one key problem with it okay it's like okay you got a scroll saw and you know how scroll saws have a short stroke so they're only really using a small part of the blade and you say to yourself well what why don't i make the stroke on the scroll saw longer well yeah it'll use more of the blade but it'll limit how thick the piece is that you can cut obviously because a scroll saw blade is not very long so that was a similar type of thing I, I had here. In essence, what it was, was the base as it is right now, that you can kind of see, with wedges on the bottom of the bucket itself. Some, kind of similar to the way you'd lock in a mixing bowl, except it would lift it. You, I was thinking, with the wedges on the bottom, you slide it in, and then you turn it, gave it like an eighth of a turn and the wedges will ramp up onto these uh, uh, outriggers on the plus sign. Simple, right? <laughs> Other than the problem that it won't go in because those wedges are in the way. I'm not 100% happy with what I came up with here, but I had to move on. I had to, you know, I had to settle on something that works and that I would be relatively happy with. Okay, just to get it done, right? So let's talk about what I did. The first thing I did was I made that plus sign that you see in the bottom, and that's a layer of three quarter inch plywood and two layers of half inch plywood to thicken it up and also add a lot of stiffness. Also, this gets rid of a lot more scrap plywood that I had, so that's a good thing. That's the objective with this project all around, actually, was to get rid of more scrap plywood. Then I started working on the bucket lifter. And I actually took a break, and I went in, and I thought about it, and I started drawing something up in SketchUp to go from. Because I had a, a loose idea in my head, and it's basically what you see down here, which is just a strip of plywood it's cut into this very special shape and then it has blocks that are screwed on as well that support these long wedges that will wedge the bucket up so the way this works is that it's loose like it's loose hanging you can see it moves around here when it's when it's open you can say that's the 3 8 inch bolt that I put in the middle that it's hanging from and free to turn on but as soon as you put the bucket in, it slides in home, and then you can rotate this and it will wedge it up. As this rotates, the wedges will ramp up onto those sides there and push up on the bucket. Works perfectly. And it has a little handle in the front for you to do that, to pull it out and push it in. The only mistake I made is that I meant to orient it on the other side. So I was working on this, all of this upside down, of course, and didn't realize I had it backwards. I got wheels and put on, they're the, uh, the fancy rollerblade type for office chairs. I bought a set thinking I could put them on my office chair, and I did, but then I stopped using that office chair, so I took them off again and I put them on here. And it's gonna roll really nice, 
Okay, so it's just a hole for that and um, put them in. Also, I had these things between the upper deck and this theme baffle, the edge of it, to glue those together. I use polyurethane construction adhesive to fasten those. I don't trust the bond that the silicone has with the plastic, and I'd rather have something there just as insurance, and that's the reason why these um, clamps are on the front here and I can't get the bucket in. Actually, I'm gonna take those off. They've been on there for about an hour. I can take those off. And you can see, I just put three in there on the front. Okay, and then the inlet, which is basically the only thing I have left to do, goes right here. I'll get the inlet put on tomorrow morning and then hopefully if the uh, weather is good like it was today, I really would have liked to have it done today, I will bring it out and I'll paint it. I'm going to paint everything except for the collection bucket. And that means this plastic here. It's not really going to stick that well to this, but if I put some spray adhesive on there first, that should uh, improve the bond enough that it will, you know, last a reasonable amount of time. All right, and the other thing is there's some silicone here. The uh, spray adhesive will do the same thing for that. It'll, you know, act as a bridge between the paint and the stuff that's underneath to keep it from peeling off too quickly. I don't want to paint it though until I get the inlet put in because that's quite a lot of work. And I didn't want to do the inlet today because I didn't want to run the chance of uh, breaking these things loose while I'm trying to cut the thing here. I can make the actual, say, interface that goes here, but I can't really cut the hole. Not yet. I want to give these overnight to set up to, for maximum strength. What do you know about the torture methods used by the Chinese on the Falun Gong? Method number one. What's your guess? Water dungeon. Did you guess water dungeon? Number two method? Number two, twisting arm and putting face in feces. Not interested in two.